Hi, welcome to Media Blitz. I'm Monica. And I'm Ashley. We have an exciting day here at Media Blitz. The film festival took place in Chicago last week, and Udi is here to give us the inside scoop and tell us what he thought about the films he saw. We're going to find out how well our teammates know their movies on the game show, Real or Not Real. And we have a special guest, Matt Keen, here with us today to talk about his band, Rebel Soul Revival, and an event they have coming up at the newest venue in Aurora. Tim is going to drop by to keep us all up to date with the latest movie, music, and media releases. But first, welcome Udi to talk about his experience at the Chicago Film Festival. Welcome Udi in the Media Blitz. So what was the film festival like? Uh, it was incredible. Uh, there were movies from all over the globe being shown, and the venue was great. Uh, overall, the experience was not too dissimilar from just going to like your typical movie theater, but from a venue standpoint, the audiences were really respectful and lovely overall. Uh, and you can tell that everyone is, that's there is like really passionate about film. Great. So what movies did you go see and what, what were your thoughts on them? I went to go see, across two different days, I watched Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which is from French writer and director Celine Sciamma, and then I watched Knives Out by writer and director Ryan Johnson. Uh, both of the films were spectacular in their own ways, but if I had to choose which one I liked one over the other, I would say Knives Out. Um, not that like anything against like Portrait of a Lady on Fire, but Knives Out was definitely more of my cup of tea. It was like really intelligently written, it was witty, it was just like gut-ticklingly hilarious. So I just, I really enjoyed it. Um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is getting a limited release on December 6th, um, so probably like any indie theaters or things like that. And then Knives Out will be getting a wide release on November 27th, which is a Wednesday. It's the day right before Thanksgiving. So hopefully uh, people like uh, whoever it is can like get their families together and just go and yeah, just pack up Hello, the theaters. Family. All right, thank you for being here, Udi. Udi interviewed moviegoers before and after the films he saw. So here's what they had to say. I have some expectations. I'm going to go in blind, hopefully. I saw a trailer for it yesterday when I saw Parasite. I wanted to go in blind, but I didn't. But um, I'm, I'm really excited for the film. Well, I hope it's good, uh, but really none. I'm trying to go in blind, just not knowing much about the directors. I haven't seen anything. I've actually not seen anything from her, so this is the first time. I've not seen anything else by her, so I'm Going, going uh, I don't know much about them, um, but I'm really interested to see a new voice. Uh, I love French movies, but I don't see a lot of French contemporary movies. Um, so I'm really just looking for if they bring any old things in or if it's a totally new vision. Just like everyone talking about it and everyone saying it's like a masterpiece is like why I'm here. Uh, just from all the acclaim I've heard about it, yeah. The concept and it just seemed like a good film. To hear the buzz around it, reading the articles, reading reviews, um, just reactions for different festivals, um, and definitely the color palette and the trailers were gorgeous and really, really hooking. This would be my fifth, fourth time. Probably 2017 when I saw Lady Bird, Three Bull Boards. Yeah. I went three times before last year. I'm seeing, I think, six other films this year. I'm seeing Waves, Knives and Skin, Portrait of the Young Fire, Hen Life, Sleepwalkers, and Corporate Street. This is my first time, I um, just moved here. This is my first time in first film seeing it. So I'm super excited for it. Yeah, I'm seeing Hidden Light on Wednesday. That is the only other one because I am too broke to see too many films. Um, I really liked it. I would 
definitely recommend it. I, I liked it a lot. I won my favorites of the year. Uh, I recommend it to a lot of people. I thought it was amazing, beautiful, sad. What sticks, rips you apart, puts you back together. I would definitely recommend it um, to anybody. Um, I feel like the performance is probably the best of the two films. I feel like they did a lot with like, just their looks at each other and yeah. Um, it's, it's a love story and it's, it's so deep and great and the writing is phenomenal and it's just it's a, it's a very very good piece of love it's very very good the acting very absolutely the word scripts were next. great obviously no. but i don't think that movie exists without those two actresses they were astounding This is my first time at the Chicago Film Festival. Uh, I watched Knives Out. This is the uh, second time I've been to the Chicago International Film Festival. This is the second film I've seen. Yeah. My favorite being, this is my favorite, it's Knives Out. I've only seen Knives Out and Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Uh, overall, I thought the film was great. Uh, I actually already recommended it to somebody. Uh, overall, I'd rate it five out of five. I would recommend it, like give it a 4 out of 5. My favorite aspect of the film was that it always kept me guessing. Uh, there, never, there never was a dull point in the film. I really liked it. My favorite aspects were probably the cinematography and the set design, but also the acting. And the plot was really good. It kept me guessing the entire time. That's probably my favorite part. I kept guessing. I'm Miranda, and today we are going to play Real or Not Real. Real or Not Real is a true-false game with questions about movies and TV shows. How it works. There are five questions, each worth one point. Real is the same as true, and not real is the same as false. Now, to introduce our lovely contestants. Hi, I'm Tim, and I'm a uh, former Walt Disney World employee. My name is Kelly, and my favorite color is pink. My name is Udi, and my favorite movie is Prisoners. All right, thank you for being here. Let's get started. Okay, number one. The Addams Family TV show from 1964 s set was many different colors such as pink. True or not true? All right, the answer is true or real. The TV show was filmed in black and white, so the set of the, the color of the set didn't matter. So like if they found something that was blue, they could use it, or green, they could use it, as long as it fit in the theme of the Adams family. Okay, question two. The time machine in the film Back to the Future was originally planned to be the DeLorean. It's not real. It was originally supposed to be a fridge. <laughs> but they figured that that would be a safety issue for children, so they changed it <laughs> to the DeLorean. Plus, time machines should be mobile, so it makes sense. Okay, number three. The AMC TV show, The Walking Dead, uses 50 gallons of fake blood per three episodes. Real or not real? It's not real. They actually use less than that. They use 30 gallons of fake blood. And they use two types. They use a thicker one for dress settings and a thinner one for um, like sprays and for like face makeup. They also use CGI blood, but you can't really count that in gallons, so. Okay, so moving on to number four. In the movie Wayne's World, the two main characters, Wayne and Garth, live in Aurora, Illinois. Real or not real? That is real. Even some of the film was uh, shot in Aurora, such as the scene or the shot with White Castle in it, so that's actually Aurora, Illinois. All right, so the final question. For the movie The Godfather, Marlon Brando wanted Don Corleone, not sure how to pronounce his name, but uh, wanted him to stuff his cheeks with cotton in order to make him look like a bulldog. Real or not real? That's real. They did this for the audition and they liked the effect, so they had a dentist make a mouthpiece 
to achieve that effect for the film of the actual uh, movie. All right, well, I have decided that you're all winners today, <laughs> so you get a prize of popcorn and candy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope you have learned something new, and thank you for being here. On June 1st, 2019, music lovers lined up outside of 21 South Broadway Street in downtown Aurora to be part of something really unique to the uh, area. A venue, the venue, where people who truly appreciate music can come and see live performances by some of the best musical talent in the area. The venue hosts a variety of live music series involving specific genres, including country, blues, and jazz. They try to fill their schedule with as many genres of music that is possible to represent. In upcoming events at the venue, you can catch Rebel Soul Revival this coming November 22nd. Here to talk about it with us today is band leader Matt Keane. Welcome to Media Blitz, Matt. You are in a band called Rebel Soul Revival. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and RSR? Sure. Um, I've been with RSR for about five years now, um, and I've been doing music professionally for the last ten. Um, we're based out of the Elburn suburb, um, and yeah, we're just trying to make our way doing original music um, at a time when it's really easy to play a lot of covers and things like that to um, get out there. So we pride ourselves on our original approach. Um, you play a lot of shows locally. Do you have a favorite venue to play at? Uh, sure. It's actually entitled The Venue. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be there later this month on November 22nd. Um, it's an incredible room. It's really intimate. It's considered a listening room. So anybody who's there is there for music, and they're there to listen to music. Um, and it's really a unique space, especially as an original artist, to um, showcase my tunes. And it's vital to what I do, really. So. Oh, thanks for being here, Matt. Rebel Soul Revival navigates through the classic southern rock waters, picking up elements of funk and jam rock along the way. They are an original band that prides itself on the unique, energetic show experience they give to fans. You can visit the venue's website for more information and to get tickets. They are also available at the door, but tickets sell out fast. Now we have Tim here with some exciting media news and releases. All right, let's talk about some movies coming to theaters very soon. In theaters this upcoming Friday is Dr. Sleep. A sequel to Stephen King's The Shining, character Dan Torrance remains traumatized by the events that occurred at the Overlook Hotel when he was a child. This mystery and horror thrill hits the big screens Friday, November 8th. On November 22nd, the much-anticipated Frozen 2 is out in theaters. Elsa the Snow Queen and the rest of the Frozen crew set out on a dangerous journey to save their kingdom. While Elsa tries to understand more about her powers, it's time to let go of the past and answer the call. That wraps up this week's episode of Media Blitz. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Monica. And I'm Ashley. We'll see you next time for the latest in music, movies, and pop culture. And don't forget to check us out on AUSpartanMedia.com.